What is up guys? This is your boy Ali. Hope everybody's staying safe. So today's video is going to be about the home network tab of the BGW320 admin panel. Uh, that's going to be a little detail on what the statuses are, what the configurations are, IPv6, Wi-Fi, Mac filtering, subnets and DHCP, and also finally IP allocation. I'm going to walk through them and see maybe that could help you guys configure your home network from the admin panel of the BGW320. Um, so I've been making videos about different tabs on the BGW320. Check them out right here. And uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do hit the subscribe button and uh, like the video if you find it any helpful. So before we waste any time, let's jump right into the video and see how this thing works. Welcome back guys. So just like every time I try to access the router from Instead of the FQDN, I try to put in the IP address because FQ FQDNs change, but the IP addresses do not. So the best way for you to access this router is 192.168.1.254, and you will hit the admin panel for AT&T BGW320. Now, the first thing you're going to hit is the status page. That's by default that comes up. But this is not what we're going through today. We're going to click on the home network tab. So the first thing we're going to cover is home network status. So the first thing you're going to see is that device IP addresses, DHCP servers, if you have configured any by default, BGW320 has a dedicated DHCP for IPv4 addresses. So it by default picks up an address pool and a server and enables it to allocate IP addresses for devices throughout your internal network. So that's that. And then if you go below, you're gonna see different types of interfaces. In this case, we're only worried about the ethernet and 5G ethernet. And then we have the IPv4 stats, which is showing the amount of packets transmitted and the amount of packets received on this gateway. Um, if you go further down, you'll see the Wi-Fi status of course, it's disabled because I'm using an internal network. I'm not using my BGW320 for Wi-Fi connections. Now, below that, you'll see some LAN Ethernet statistics. Um, if that's of any concern to you, you could use that. Now, for me, I'm only using port 1 because I'm using that as a pass-through and I'm not using any other ports to my LAN network. You could clear statistics from here if you want to pick up new ones, but for me, it doesn't matter, so I leave it as is. So the next tab we're going to go under is called Configure. Configure before you enter it, obviously, because you can make admin level changes and configuration changes to the router, it requires another level of access. Um, for security reasons, you need a device access code, and you could find that on the back of your router. And I've mentioned that in my previous videos as well for the people this is their first video that they're watching um, it's for them you could access you could get the device access code from the back of your router okay so once you are under configuration and you do put the device access code you're going to land at this page this is pretty much for all the ethernet ports that are on the device it's going to give you um, options to be able to change um, um, the throughput speeds are, you know, to the amount that you are thinking the traffic is going to be coming into that port. So the best option would be auto because then it would scale to depending on the amount of traffic coming in. So the four options you have here is 100 meg, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, or 5 gig. Um, you know, they're all in full duplex, no half duplexes here. But the best option would be to keep it in auto and it will adjust as necessary according to the throughput. The next tab would be the IPv6 tab. Um, so IPv6 is normally would be configured by your ISP provider. So I would just leave that alone and not mess with that. Okay, the next tab is going to be the Wi-Fi. Uh, this is most likely, most probably the most used page on the admin panel for the people that are trying to constantly change their Wi-Fi home SSIDs or network names or security passwords, etc. Um, so once you land on this page, you'll see something very similar 
um, you know, that you may be used to looking at on other routers, such as network name or home SSID. Um, to enable your home SSID, you're going to have to make sure that you turn it on here. For me, uh, I have it off. Um, and then, of course, you could go down and enable your guest one as well. But if you have the app for AT&T, um, then it's very easy to use it on the app the guest network you could pretty much spin it up in like within within seconds so it's a lot easier to do it on there if you are looking to make some changes on this page now you do have the option to click advanced here so once you click advanced it'll split your network up in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and guest network so now you have some more options to play around with for example wi-fi operations you could enable that to on you could uh, mess with the mode bandwidth channel uh, channel scan and everything else right so if you know what you're doing with this you could definitely changes uh, change it and then obviously you could find the best channel you know with the least amount of interference uh, for your wireless connections to be uh, very stable throughout the house um, and then if you go further down guest SSID of course you know you could change the guest network name and passwords and uh, security encryptions and all of that stuff now on the bottom you have the 5 gig network so you could also do the similar things that you could for 2.4 up on top and that's pretty much what sums this up I'm not gonna go too detailed into WPS and WPS pin because uh, for basic usage you don't need to do all of that so the next tab is gonna be Mac filtering now Mac filtering is a very useful tool even though a lot of people might not use it so pretty much you could allow or deny it um, traffic into your network based on the MAC address so let's say if you want to allow a certain uh, MAC addresses on 2.4 gigahertz so what you would do is click allow on your home M home SSID on 2.4 gigahertz or even 5 gigahertz and then you could select MAC addresses and add them letting it know what network to um, you know allow those mac addresses from but that would also mean that there's nothing else that would be able to enter your home traffic aside from these mac addresses now the best way to do this just like you would do on a firewall is to deny everything now the best thing is to just deny it all so that way you are only specifically identifying mac addresses that you do not want to enter your network so that's what, what you would do in a firewall and you would enable the traffic that you want uh, to come inside your network so deny list deny list and then you could pretty much select the mac addresses that you'd like and then save that and move on with that okay the next tab would be your subnets and dhcp um so over here you have some dhcp configurations and and dhcp pool ip addresses and the dhcp lease time and everything that you could set uh, depending depending on how you want to do certain things you could change all of those parameters as necessary but for home usage i would say that i mean you don't if you don't have a very large network then that pool address uh, looks appropriate i mean you don't have to make changes to it and you could pretty much leave dhcp leads to whatever number of days um, and then you have the configuration of ipv6 dhcp right under that um, you could make changes to that um, but i would say just to leave the public subnet mode uh, disabled because put your internal network on the public address space and you don't want to do that but because then all the traffic on the internet will be exposed to your uh, internal home devices so make sure you leave that off uh, cascading router another uh, like you know if you have another hop that you want your traffic to go through so you could limit some traffic and so on and so forth you could put QoS and all of that um, I at this point I think you should just leave that blank and just uh, as you are we're just talking about BGW320 here but if you did have another router that you want to cascade traffic through then you would uh, enable this option now the next tab would be your IP allocation now IP allocation is pretty interesting just like how you would configure static IP addresses on a gateway um, you know you want public internet traffic coming to certain devices from uh, on the other side of the firewall you would configure IP allocation so that way when you do reboot a device or the device goes offline or it gets booted or it, you know it gets uh, 
uh, it refreshes or uh, whatever happens to the device once it comes back up it picks up the same IP addresses so that's what you're allocating here is to make sure once the device goes down comes back up it picks up the same IP address rather than dynamically being assigned by the DHCP a new IP address so hope that makes sense to you guys if you do have any questions please drop in the comments below uh, i appreciate you guys tuning in if you haven't subscribed make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, till next time i'll see you guys later